Hello and welcome to my talk uh, called Augmenting Automated Game Testing with Deep Reinforcement Learning. So before I start the talk, I want to give a brief introduction to Electronic Arch, that's the company where I work at. Uh, so EA, or Electronic Arch, is a video game company. Uh, we have about 10,000 employees, about 30 game studios, uh, and we make approximately the same number of games I guess every year, and there are about 300 million players in total that plays EA games. And games includes Battlefield and Battlefront and FIFA, NHL, uh, Sims, and Apex Legends, and so on. And Seed, uh, which is the uh, studio that I work in, is a, a research group within EA. Our focus is on advanced uh, R&D, uh, we are about 30 people in, in Europe and North America. We work on four principles or pillars. The first is to have close collaboration with studios who would like to improve their life. Um, and that's why we're looking, for example, for reinforcement learning, to how we can infuse that technology into uh, the current games or the, the, the common uh, titles. We also would like to do open source, which we have done also before, um, if, if we can. Um, and also our main focus is also on talk and presentations, and that's why I'm here today. And uh, we would like to not only within EA uh, spread the knowledge, but also outside. And we also look into publish and patent uh, if we find something that is interesting to uh, the rest of the community as well. So that was a little bit about us and uh, what we do. Um, so I want to first give an overview of what I'm going to talk about today. And that's going to be on testing games. And why we test games is because today modern games are enormous. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of game developers doing this. And with, that complexity grows, also the number of uh, introduced bugs increases. So we could have you know, thousands of assets, the, the game areas are you know, measured in kilometers now, and there is a lot of potential places where things could go wrong. And I'm not going to talk so much about the, the basic uh, uh, bugs, for example, like unit bugs or where we have drivers uh, faulting. But what we are going to look into is the kind of bugs that are more logical. Where, for example, that players get stuck, where you have missing box colliders, meaning that you can walk through objects, uh, walking through walls, for example, and also imbalances when it comes to maps or characters and so on. If there are newly introduced maps, we want them to be balanced as much as possible. There are also other use cases, so that's map coverage. Uh, we also do load test um, and also difficulty assessment. So today's uh, game testing is mainly done in, uh, in two ways. Either you have scripted bots that you, you require to script to do certain stuff, and then that's how you train, uh, test the game. Um, it's a very fast solution, but it's not very intelligent. It can, can, tends to be very repetitive, and it doesn't find every, uh, every bug you would like to. And that's why we have also human uh, play testers. Um, but that tends to be very, very repetitive because it's a thing that you need to do over and over again. You need to go to certain places, you need to try out, and every time there's not place, you do it again. It's very repetitive, very costly, and, and time-consuming. The, the turnaround time could be weeks, um, and that's not very good for game development. We would like uh, to be much faster to find this sweet spot between automated and human uh, playtesters. And that's where reinforcement learning comes in, um, because it kind of has a flavor of self-learning, uh, like humans have. It's also adaptive, and it's also unpredictable which means it's going to be able to test better the games. It's going to do things that you maybe not uh, intended to. 
And also it, it's potentially more effective to let the agent learn to play the game instead of using a program or a game tester. So quickly sh and shortly on why we use reinforcement learning and why that could potentially be good. Um, because reinforcement learning learns by uh, testing to play the game and learning to play and get feedback from the game. So it's not uh, learn well, it doesn't play how it's told, but it learns to play the game, which means that it can potentially find uh, exploits much better. And this is a good example on the right here. It's uh, open AI did some experiment on an old uh, uh, game called Coastal Guard, I think. And the, the, the game developer's potential for this game was for their boat to go along a, a track, a uh, circuit. But when they used reinforcement learning on this, the, it found out that you could get much higher reward by just picking up these green little boxes in the water because they respawn all the time. And there you can get um, you know, much higher content that you intended to, to get, which means that the RL agent found this exploit in the game. And we would like to find that ex those exploits before the, the players do because that's, uh, that's not something that we would like to ship games with. And this is just one example of of course. And as the algorithm learns, we don't need scripting. It's, it's a very nice feature. We can retrain them instead of rewriting. And retraining could be potentially be much quicker. And it's unpredictable and teachable uh, because you have this reward function that you could also uh, control uh, behaviors, which means it's more human-like. And also you have inherently built-in explorative behavior and exploitive behaviors, uh, and it figures out to play the games. So we did a proof of concept on this, um, where we took a game called uh, this Marble Labyrinth. Many of you maybe have played this uh, when you were kids. And uh, the game is controlled by two knobs. You have this ball uh, that you need to go from A to B into the hole. And here is a training setup. We have 24 different uh, environments. Um, this is when it's fully trained. This would be really hard to, um, to, um, to program itself. Um, so that's nice that we could potentially learn that as well. And uh, here we have a, a ball that gets the information about the game but it also gets a little bit uh, faster speed on the controllers. And it learns to, to exploit the game by flipping the ball instead. Um, and this, is, this game is a simple game, but it shows the proof of concept that you can actually learn to find exploit, which was not intended. And this is maybe something that you did as a kid as well, uh, learning to exploit the game. And um, it's, um, it's a nice feature that we wouldn't be able to so easily uh, script, at least. So, so the current research that we do, uh, we're looking in a lot of, of the test ranges because that's how we would like to test games in parts instead of testing the, the full game at first, at least, where we build uh, environments uh, that we can test our uh, ideas and concepts. And here's some example of that. So this is an RL agent running around the environment and this goal is just to get A to B, just to cover the game and to see if you can get all the waypoints. And that's, um, that's one very kind of simple test you, you can do. And it's easy to learn to, to do that. This agent, uh, there's a missing a box collider here. So it, uh, it goes from A to B, but and it learns to go through the walls uh, without being told that. So that's, also shows that we can learn to uh, find uh, exploited games. So, so here is an example of um, where we use a population of agents, and this is uh, during training. Um, and the goal is to, again, go from A to B and try to just explore the map. And we have put in some, uh, uh, some bugs intentionally here to see if we can uh, learn to figure out this. So there's one missing uh, collision. Um, box here, which means I can walk through the walls. And there's two places where I can get stuck. So they're indicated by these uh, little uh, boxes here. 
And when we use so many of these, we can get also better uh, statistical uh, profile on, on the environment. And uh, so you see here, this, they actually found it pretty easy this after a few hours of training where they can go through the wall. And they also learn to get so all the places in the map. And so now we know that where we can see where they get stuck, we can see where they go through the walls, and we can also see that all the places on the maps which are reachable. And this is an image then uh, showing uh, after training uh, the distribution of visits, uh, but also the distribution of where it gets stuck. It's a little bit hard to see maybe in this. But you go from this image, where you don't have much information, to this. And you can see where they go through the wall and you can see where they get stuck. And we could do similar also for uh, driving games, for example. Here we have a population of, of cars that plays a map. And uh, by this, you can see where you have the difficult parts, where they, uh, where they fall off. And you can get some kind of indication uh, you know, how difficult the different uh, segments of the road is. And also, you, you can get indicators where they drive off. And if you have a spike in, in these indicators, you know that this is a hard area. Uh, so it's a good way of finding not only bugs to exploit, but also uh, places that are a bit more difficult. Uh, and then you can choose to keep them or not. Uh, we did some uh, research on this, and we published a, a paper if you would like to, to know more. And it more or less shows what I told you uh, previous here now. That, uh, and we also saw that we get a much better coverage by using scripted uh, bots. So you see in the image A, uh, you have a scripted a navigation mesh agent that goes around, and it doesn't cover as good as you, you can compare it to B, C, and D, which are RL, RL agent with different uh, training time. Uh, and also, there is a missing box collider here. That's the video you saw before. Uh, the agent doesn't see the color of this, so it doesn't know. But you can see that the, uh, the scripted bot doesn't learn to go through that. It, it just uh, follows the navigation mesh and, and doesn't find it, while it's very easy for the agent to actually figure out exactly where to go. And you can easily, with using an analytics tool, see where you can actually walk through the wall. And you can also use this as a tool in development, potentially, where you can have your RL agent playing the game at the same time as you're building your map. And this is also a proof of concept of a game developer making a small segment of a map where the agent can go from A to B. And it always tests. And you see here it gets stuck here, so we can then uh, directly find out that well, this is a place where agent could get, or a player could get stuck, so you can uh, increase that. And also you can also find places where it, where it cannot get uh, through, and then you can also shift accordingly. And by using a population, you can also get kind of a statistics on how difficult the the part is and compare that to, to different uh, segments. And there are some uh, research directions that we would like to, to go towards. One is generalization, because that's very important. If you don't want to retrain, you want to have an agent that can generalize well. Uh, interpretation of behavior. The agent will not tell you if it finds a bug. That's why it's important to use analytics tools to do that. Uh, also, to get better coverage, we would like to have a more uh, human-like behavior, even more than our relation can give today. Uh, that's something I would like to look into. Uh, also, fine-tuning of behavior. When you have trained an RL agent, it's hard to retrain specific parts of it. You have to retrain everything. That's something I would like to look into. Also, uh, tuning of skill level is also important uh, when it comes to testing, because you have players on all different uh, skill levels, and that's what you also want to mimic when you, in your RL agents. Now, this course of potential leads to game AI, which me, uh, which is meaning that AI that are in games, that's not only testing, but actually are shipped with games. And it could cover collaborative AI, which 
plays with a player or like opponent. That's kind of the classical AI where that's what you play against. NPCs um, that can be in your environment and have certain behaviors and learn stuff. And similar with wildlife that you could have maybe ecosystem with different characters. Okay, to summarize, um, reinforcement learning has really the potential to improve automated testing. Um, it, it can push the boundaries of what's possible with uh, scripts and, uh, and humans. And so far we have only explored a small part of what's possible with, uh, with, with RL and we would like to uh, continue this and we think there is a lot of potential uh, using RL. And also in general, machine learning has the potential to radically change the way we make games because this can be something that also uh, together with the game developers uh, plays the games simultaneously and learn about the game. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm, I'm going to be available for questions after the, 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 this talk. Thank you.